still a chance. Shut your trap, kid! Children and dwarfs first, just like the old stories say. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. You said there were other people down there. We... we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here.
spoken was supposed to be scary. Hmm. Let the game see.
hear something. It's... It's Magister Siwan. She tries to speak, but can only gape as she clutches her neck, trying to stem the bleeding of a gushing wound. With jagged movements, she raises her clenched fist and holds out a length of cloth, soaked with some kind of strong-smelling tincture. Blood quickly soaks through the cloth. Magister Siwan's mouth opens and closes, her eyes wide in terror. Blood pours out from around the bandage. Magister Siwan reaches out to you, her hand flailing. It's working. The pressure is stemming the flow of blood. Siwan clutches your arm, her eyes locked with yours. Something within the ship snaps. The floorboards shudder. Siwan struggles to her feet, clinging to you tightly. The ship lets out a deep groan, then cracks. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity, High Judge Orivan. Those void boy can make short bloody work of the ship. Am I the lone survivor? It seems someone, something, wanted me alive. of any trace of the old Source King. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. I guess. Well, the people who put me here are human, and the people who took my parents away are human too. Or do you mean because I'm a... Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any source on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. No one cares where I go. They know I can't leave the island. It's nicer out here than inside anyway. But you didn't die. There isn't anywhere safer, that's what I mean. 
You'll see. I guess I am, but it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. This statue must be a thousand years old. Wonder how much longer it'll last. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they've made it to shore. were supposed to keep those things at bay. Drowned and eaten by a void woken. I wonder in which order. spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. 
His skin is of a bright blood red color. Could he be? Yes, you recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hole. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Now then, if there's nothing further. If you really must know, I haven't quite decided yet. I've a frightful amount of things on my mind, hence my standing here contemplating the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Memories. Quite so. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. Of course, it's rather specific. Quite obviously, I'm musing over the very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? Oh, may the seven have mercy on their own creation. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between All-Conquering and World Taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has a hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship after all. Fine. I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. Jolly good. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you?
Very well. Onwards then to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off. The squirrel's nose twitches as you approach, but the creature turns away before you can say anything. It seems he doesn't want...